Um, that is the URL. I'll put it in the chat if you want to look at it yourself. Okay, here. It's about, it's a few seconds behind. Okay. If I get double audio, I've shut that quickly. You get the gist. So you can actually, you know, potentially do all hands meetings to hundreds of thousands, millions potentially via the, uh, the, the sort of link. Okay. And again, as you can see, you can mute. Obviously, you've got the video. And again, from the users, I can sort of mute and kick people out. Okay. All happy with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, good. Okay. We have um, facts. I'll, I'll ask that question now. It tends to be a Marmite moment. Um, but we do have it. So people either have it or think it's laughable. But you have desktop -desk facts. So you can send and receive faxes from desktop application. And then we have uh, sort of other options, which I'll cover shortly. But certainly, um, things like uh, call forwarding. We have a sort of massive call forwarding. So there's an argument to say you've got a desktop application, you've got a mobile application, uh, the instant messaging. We can get you wherever they are. You can forward based on CLI, date and time, et cetera, et cetera. OK. In terms of integrations, so we have some native integrations with um, Zendesk, Dynamics, Salesforce, uh, Bullhorn. We've got some more coming up. Currently, the way they look is that you have this little um, sort of Applet, for want of a better word here, and this is phone control. So it's not a soft phone currently, it is phone control. And depending on the uh, the uh, CRM, you sort of get click to dial. So you'll highlight a number, you can click on it and it will dial, and on inbound, it, it will screen pop a record if it finds it. And again, you can just sort of decide what CRM objects they are. And again, that is um, CRM dependent. You know, so in Salesforce, happens to be account lead contact. And then you have, um, again, potentially you'll have a pop-up notes, or you can make notes on the fly, and that will save within the CRM. Okay. And, and is this integration out of the box, or do we need to do anything in the back end to integrate? So, it? so again, it's in terms of native integrations, uh, they start from an X2 license. And as long as you've got an X2 license, uh, you have the ability to do that. And there are um, installation guides. So certainly Salesforce, it's on the Salesforce App Store. So you just click on it and install it. There are some configuration in terms of users you put it out to, somebody with Dynamics. Um, but, so there is some installation. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's essentially related to the license you have. So all integrations start at X2. OK, thank you. OK, okay. So, so that's sort of an end user piece, one of a better word, unless I've uh, missed anything, Tom, because that is Highly possible. No, it's all good so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if happy, I'll sort of move on to the analytics. If you're okay with that. Yep. Okay. So again, it's web-based. So you would log in. Um, so there are three levels, and again, you decide whether people have access to this or not. And it's this it's based on license. So everyone has what I'm or access to uh, what I'm showing you at the moment. You just decide whether they have that or not. And it, we call this essential. So our reports tend to go from the very large to the very small. So this is um, our corporate system. So the first report, you get this company summary. You can obviously do your date ranges. You've got um, you know, a selection of filters you can do. So this is all called into our system. Um, you know, so you can look at things like when are the missed calls. So don't ring us at 11 o'clock. Clearly, that's tea break time, those sorts of things. You, you get a sort of broad total of what's going on. Can then drill that down to extension. So you've got a summary extension now. When it comes up, so you get your sort of prerequisite pie charts and, and bar graphs. Okay, but you also get a summary of your uh, sort of you know each individual. And again, you can search by name. So Mr. Hathaway here. And if I drill into him, I can actually get a, a sort of summary dashboard for Mr. Hathaway here and what he's done. So again, I can see his call flows. Uh, based on, on you know what he's receiving, when he's missing his calls. So again, came in late, key break then, whatever it may be. Okay, we get a sort of broad overview. 
And then you get your sort of traditional CDR. So this is your raw data, you know, a line of text for each call. Um, you know, which you can set filters on call ID and that sort of stuff and pivot out. Now those three reports can be scheduled. And the last two, uh, we have two types of uh, sort of schedule for that. One where it will uh, essentially email you and say the report's available and you'll come here and download it. And then you can get a, an email of the last two to the extension summary and a CDR where it will actually email you the, the report itself as CSV or PDF. Okay. Um, can I ask a quick question about missed calls? If you're in a conference call such as this and somebody's trying to contact you, what happens? Do you see a little message flash up saying ABC is trying to contact you or is it automatically um, rejected to voicemail? So um, in default, you can have two calls. So if you're on a call, you will get a, um, a call notification come up which you can end there and then and send a voicemail um mm. so yeah but you can configure that if you want to but in default yes you'll get a second call come through okay thank you so those are your sort of base reports we then have um and again i won't go through one by one but active calls everything's on at the moment so unreturned calls people quite like this is based on the date range you're essentially looking at the call the telephone number coming in and uh you know, so any call that's not been answered by somebody who's gone through the voicemail, we compare that to dialed numbers going out. So these are the people that have rung in and we haven't called back. So you know, sales environment, you know, warm leads, uh, you know, support environment, potentially upset people. Okay. And then you've got your sort of standard you know, number of calls by a particular telephone number. So they've done a marketing campaign. You can sort of look at that. Okay. And then you have um, sort of a busy lamp filled with this. So you can look at, you know, the system as a whole. And this is based on the application, so you can see whether people are actually logged in and, and the status they are. So it's a sort of giant, busy lamp field for your whole organization. Again, you can search by name, branches, and those sorts of things. Okay, that's the sort of base level reporting. Okay, for the next level up, we call supervisor, uh, and this is from an X4 license. Okay, and then you get some reports around the inbuilt queues and the ring routes. Okay, so. There are queues in the system, um, which you can use. The way the way queues work on the system is that um, the call will come into a queue. If no one's available, you get an upfront message. You get music on hold and a repeat message, and then that will sort of repeat as you go through. Um, and then your agents can log in and take the calls. So with that, with the reporting here, you get a sort of queue board. Again, you can't customize this. What you see is what you get. Um, and this will update every five seconds or so for things like calls, basically counters, and the timers update every 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And you can see one queue at any one time. And then you get some additional um, reports on queues. So you can look at more than one queue at any one time. Okay, so you've got the sort of call comparison here, all the queues again, similarly, these stats, stats here will update um, you know, every five seconds or so. And the other ones will be uh, you know, times of 10 to 15 minutes. And then you can actually go into something called Q, called Q details and actually look at the call queue itself. Uh, I may have picked the wrong one, but here you can see a sort of distribution of calls. So when they've land, so we actually use a full contact center within our system, which is why there's no stats. But again, for a particular queue, based on your time range, you know, you can see current calls waiting, but you can also see a, a sort of distribution of when your calls are, are happening here. So sort of, you know, your busy times, those sorts of things. Okay. And we got a similar thing for ring groups. So you've got your sort of call group data uh, based on your ring groups. Now, the difference between ring groups and queues on the 8x8 system is that um, on a ring group, uh, you can distribute the calls, so they can all ring, you can distribute around. But if everyone on the, on the, in the group is busy, that you know, the group is busy and the call has to go somewhere else. Again, you can set it external to another ring group, those sorts of things. Okay. I'll wait for that to come up. This is going to be too long. All right, so I shall carry on. So the final report, and this comes from X4, is called Quality. Now, because we own everything and all the calls flow through our data centers, etc., and we get some diagnostic information from both the handsets and the um, desktop application, we can arguably tell you whether the call quality is any good. So we're actually measuring the speech, the RTP stream. So again, similarly, our reports go from the very large to the very small. So this is uh, all calls. 
uh, on the eight byte corporates, and we're saying less than a, a percent of calls are fair or poor. Okay. And you can actually drill down uh, into individual calls. So our support department actually use this sort of um, look at specific calls if you were to ring in with a fault. So you know you can go to a load of geek information, even to things like you know what was the device. So this was an Android. What version? Okay. We get things like network loss, jitter loss. Now, how spread out that is. So we can we can get all that information. You can get all that information. And also, based on the public IP address, we can actually tell you where the call was made to and from. Okay. And the old Google Maps, you can actually drop it down and actually see where the call was made to and from. Okay. All right. And similarly, you can, uh, you know, yeah. look. <laughs> you can look where people are logged in. So I've said I'm, uh, you know, working from home today. <laughs> yeah, so I've said I'm working from home. This is where my devices are logged in. So we got someone in Spain allegedly. Okay, and it always, if I drop down from a large height, it always tends to land near water. So we'll have a look. But yeah, so you can see where devices are logged in. So there we go. <laughs> Right. But just the sort of flavor of the reporting that we've got. Um, and again, there are APIs to the CDR, so you can sort of um, get this information out and crunch it yourself, should you see fit. Okay. All happy with that? Tom, anything I missed? No, nothing so far. All good. Good. Okay. Any questions on that? No, all good. Okay. So the final piece will be uh, administration. If you're happy with that, I'll go through it. Okay, so it's cloud-based. So as long as you get access to a web page, uh, you can admit a system. Um, okay. So when you log in, you've got a sort of single sign-on. Uh, depending on all the, the buttons that you have, depends what you got access to. This also includes uh, the contact center. But for the uh, PBX or UC piece, it's this button here called Config Manager. Okay. What system are you guys using at the moment or have or what do you have in the house, for instance? What do you have? Right. Do you do you guys look after it yourself? Do you sort of program it or no? No, no. all right. I don't really like, really like yeah. I've been in telecoms a while, and this is, you know, easy compared to some of the systems out there, which is why I mentioned it. But um, if you haven't played around with it, it doesn't matter. Um, so everything, so everything's built up by users. So here you got all your programming. Okay, on the right hand side you got sort of like a user guides. So you know, if you want to set up a core queue or ring group and auto attendant, you can come in here, and it will give you a sort of a step by step guide on how to do it. But you have users. And it's pretty straightforward. You have a user, you give them abilities. So the first thing, if I go into edit it, you would assign them a license. Based on the license, you would then get certain abilities. Okay. And it's then just literally a simple case of, you know, give them a telephone number or telephone numbers. Yeah. Can okay. you change your number? So if you've got a call center that wants to call locally, can they um, change it on the system where they're dialing from that local area? Yes, so um, on the phone numbers, so we are a telco, we can supply telephone numbers, so any numbers that you had on the system would appear here, that they are part right. of the license. We do have a block of um, numbers from around the country that you can claim straight away, so you can come in here, and if you have the license, you know, I yeah, sure. Northern, search. Okay. As soon as I click that, that is live. Yeah. Okay, right. and then... If you set it as a shared CLI here, uh -huh. okay, when you make an outbound call, it'll all come from there. Yeah, got it. You, you can decide here what number do I want to use. Right, great, cool. Okay, I'm glad to say yes. Um, so yeah, but if you move licenses around. You can move telephone numbers around. You can move devices around. So, um, so for instance. 
this person here doesn't have a device, but I could give them, I don't know, a polycom. Okay. Now, the way that's provisioned, um, if it's bought from us, they have the provision URL, so it would just come to us and it will provision. And if you've got an activation code, they type the code in. If you put the MAC address in, the phone will just come up live. Fine. Okay. But all these things can be moved around. So, you know, telephone numbers, devices. In terms of do you have any limitations on um, which devices can be used? Yeah, so um, it tends to be Polycom handsets are the best in terms of integrations, but uh, there is details on our website. Uh, it tends to be Polycom, we do Cisco and Yealink, but these are all the devices that we essentially support. So there's audio codes for things like analog devices, it's usually a Cisco handsets. Um, there is a Panasonic DECT and a lot of Polycoms. Um, and there's a few Yealinks in there, but we can certainly give you information on the handsets we support. Yeah, and uh, say you put a package together, would that be a case of we, like if, if a new customer, for example, wants hard phones as well as obviously your soft phone offering, uh, would, would that be a package that you put together or would we provide the hardware, for example, and then you do the software or how would that work? Well, we, we can do all of that for you. It's, it's completely down to how you want to work with us. So yeah. for example, um, Usually when we work with JH in the past, essentially we would come with you on projects. Uh, we would try and identify the needs so we can marry up the licenses and help you along with that yeah. sales process as much as possible, provide you with quotations with or without handsets. Um, ideally with professional services, so we're delivering it for you, um, implementing project managing and in, and uh, training. Yeah. Does that include proof of concepts? Sure. Okay. Dep depend, depends on how, it, how how wide we're looking at proof of concept, but we have some demo licenses and some trial licenses that we can certainly allow customers to use and, and have a play with it for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. On, on, on that line, we do, you know, as part of the pre-sales deployment and support, we have a, something called a network test, which will do some port scans, check things like SIP LG, so run some basic tests to check that the network's going to work for, um, you know, the 8x8 services. Um, so certainly, you know, those can be issued, you know, before a deployment. What, or, what kind of network limitations do you have? So is there, is there any sort of, um, we don't touch anything under a certain bandwidth or anything along those lines, or is it just? No, I mean, uh, ultimately we, we, we request that you need about 100 kilobits per second up and down per concurrent call. Okay, not a lot. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is that all calls will go to and from you know, the nearest data center that includes internal so if you're even if you're ringing you know your colleague you know across how many data centers do you have? sorry say again how many data centers do you have globally uh in last count was around 15 so in the uk uh we currently have uh four yeah uh, spread out across our different services uh we've got amsterdam and then the sort of east coast of the us so certainly if if the UK data center was to die, you would flip over to either Amsterdam or the east coast of the US. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So it is London at the moment, I think. Sorry, go I was on. about to say, we're, we're, we're independent, so we sell quite a few different cloud systems, but 8x8 is by far the most resilient. And if you're dealing with a global customer, it's one of the few products that can genuinely deliver a global service because obviously if you've got offices in the UK, uh, China, Australia, um, anywhere in Europe, then all of those IP devices are going to connect to the nearest data center, but still be fully integrated. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, someone you may have heard of is geo routing. So it's to do with speech for essentially. So if you've got, again, we have plenty of global customers, we have, you know, plenty of small customers, but if, uh, you know, you have a, a UK company, but they got people in Australia, if they're ringing other people in Australia, the media will actually stay local to local data center. So even though the signaling will come back to the UK for things like, you know, Send up the call, etc. The media will stay locally, so that you know you get call quality, and we'll actually guarantee, I think, call quality of a certain MOS score. Um, you know, as long as you build in the hundred kilobits per second up and down per call, etc. So, yeah, cool. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So users, again, things like I mean, I was going to touch on a call forward just to give you sort of an uh, example of what we can do. But again, you know, all your sort of options in here in terms of Know, your caller ID, what you want to send out, um, you know, music on hold. We have call recording, okay? So that can be set here. And we've got sort of three options. No call recording, if you consider that an option, record all calls, uh, or the user will press a button to start and stop recording. 
Um, but the call forwarding, we've got the usual things, you know, no answer, busy. Internet connection is down. So everything we do, you register to us and there's a keep alive. So the internet connection down is essentially that device can no longer speak to us. So again, think about redundancy, you know, someone cuts through your line, you can reroute to mobiles. I was talking about these sort of extra rules. So you can actually create rules so that, you know, for a particular telephone number during a particular time, you know, I can send that, you know, to lots of different places. Okay. Um, you know, channel numbers, whatever it may be. Okay. Um, and you can do that so it will ring them all simultaneously. It will drop down through them. And if it does can't reach them all, it'll actually then go to voicemail. So you've got a lot of, you know, quite expansive call forwarding stuff. Um, all happy with that, just from a basic user point of view? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, things like your auto attendance are all connected here. Anything particularly you would like to see? Because I appreciate we've got about 20 minutes left in terms of configuration. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't want to bore I, you with auto um, attendance. Yeah, can but... I, um, what kind of customer applications you usually come across? Is it a contact center, just normal office? requirements uh, anything specific uh, see because we're as we said sort of in our infancy still um it's mainly office based but um I'm, I'm sure that as time progresses we will come across contact centers or people that run on a similar kind of dial out model um but um at, at the minute i would i would say that it's more just office and, and that kind of thing okay Matt, do you want to very quickly just touch on X8 just to give them an idea of what we do on Contact Center? Yep. Okay, so Contact Center, these are the sort of X6, X7, X8. Okay, so this is where you're talking omni channel Contact Center. Now, uh, the way an agent will work is that they have this agent GUI, which is web based. Okay. Um, and they would receive the calls through here. But what because it's all our own platform, they have a, a directory. So we have this sort of single pane of glass. So they can see all their other agents within the system, but they can also see the back office staff. So you know, I can see here Chris Hoy is available, busy, and I can instant message and call him. So it's about that, you know. Um, you know, Tom's an expert in GDPR. I get a GDPR question. Okay. He's clearly not a contact center agent, but I can see that he's available. You know, and I can instant message or call him. It doesn't matter where he's in Starbucks. Okay, he will get that message. It's all those sorts of stuff. Okay, so we do phone, uh, both inbound and a preview outbound. We've got web chat. We have email. Okay, and they will all sort of be processed through here from a whistle top store type of point of view. Okay, we have a lot of analytics. Uh, you know, so call waiting that sort of stuff. We have a, a you know much more um, you know live dashboards. And one of the things I will touch on, and I appreciate I'm stampeding through this, is in terms of call recording, we got a uh, speech transcription engine as well. So um, not only will it record the calls, okay, but you can also um, search on keywords. Now, can I ask a question? In terms of um, analytics, who in which department would normally be interested in looking at the analytics, both in terms of quality or uh, duration? Because I, I presume duration would be more interested by um, the marketing department, but who would actually, the administration is usually typically kept within the um, within the IT department. It, 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 sorry, Tom, you want to go in now? I, I, I was going to say, it, it, really, it really depends upon the company. Um, different companies have different requirements on things like the analytics. So, for example, if you're dealing with a company where they, they take orders over the telephone or they certainly have a, a, a proactive marketing department where they're making calls out, then things like the uh, the metrics is very important because they want to be able to see how many calls have been making, talk time, that kind of stuff. I've got other customers that don't Sounds even care that it exists. Yes, yeah, so quite, quite often it's down to, you know, sometimes how are you measuring your staff? So, you know, is it number of calls? Is it duration yeah. of calls? Um, and sometimes it might, I just had a call coming recently where they want to look at their reception. So how many calls are they, are they getting in reception? How many they transfer? Uh, they might need more people or less people. So. The question was, who would 
who would be responsible for managing it? Um, oh, managing. Sorry, I thought you said metrics. Managing, um, that would be us. We do the frontline support. So first, first line of the support would be ourselves. So um, either we can give you guys a white label service. Um, the custom customers want to do some self-management. And obviously this administration tool that Matt showed you earlier, they can do that themselves. If you guys want to have uh, some access to that, you can do. Um, it, it, again, it depends on the customer. But generally, the, the first line support r runs with us. So if, for example, we had a customer who um, does online ordering, for example, and they came to us and said, listen, we want to have these three reports. Would we write the reports as a free of charge or a, or a chargeable service for them so that they can then just hit this button, get those reports out? Or would they be expected to create the reports themselves? From an 8x8 point of view, the reports are in there and they can be scheduled and we can certainly configure that. You know, you could sell that on potentially as a, a function that you want to do if you want to administer it. So I suppose it's both, you know, yeah. we can and certainly we have training courses so that you can, you know, there, there are guides in it. So if you want to sell a server and do it yourself and let your customers do that, you can. If you want it to be, you know, maintained by Tom and the guys, then they can certainly do that. Yeah, I was just trying to identify you, um, you know, areas where you can migrate somebody from an existing cloud platform to your cloud platform and you know what kind of things that might, might be interesting for them and in terms of and i know you're going to talk about licensing later but would you say that this works best for up to 150 users or would it 250 or 500 in terms of uh, performance it, it to be fair it doesn't matter um, you know, you can be three users, you can be a thousand users. It's the same technology. Um, ah. you know, so uh, in terms of sweet spot for the contact center, we have found, um, you know, you're talking probably 100, 200 agents potentially. But again, we have as, as little as two or three and we have as many as, you know, a thousand or so. so. In, in terms of um, the, the call recording which you mentioned, does that get recorded into your data center or can uh, they obviously have a, an on-prem uh, version for their, like some people have different policies where everything's going to be stored locally when it turns to calls and things like that. Um, would that be purely into your data center? Would it be they'd be able to replicate from the data center or can they come straight off of what's there and record it direct to uh, drives in, in, in house, for example? So it's, it's recorded within our data centers, but there are um, you know mechanisms to archive them. So if you want to pull them off and store them locally, you know Bloomberg, well, those sorts of things. Yes, that can be done, and that can be done manually yeah. um, by you know the, the admin portal, or we can set up you know it to be secure FTP, you know once a day, once a week, once a month. Yeah. Okay. Great. And in terms of pricing with your partners, how does it work if? I guess you're working with the partners already. If we was to come to the table with an opportunity, do we get price parity? Is there any deal rich um, facility that you have? How, how does it normally work with eight, eight by eight? So there are facilities where we can register deals. Uh, once we've registered the deal with eight by eight, then we will get the priority of the support. Um, I don't think we can stop other people from quoting, but no. certainly. But certainly we, we tend to be very cost effective, especially when it comes to the service delivery as well, because we, we focus solely on telephone systems. Um, we find a lot of our competitors nowadays are people are trying to do little bits of everything. And it means that we can be laser focused on delivering cloud telephone systems and giving them very right. cost effective professional services around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so from an eight, if I got to say from an eight, eight, eight perspective, yeah, there's a deal registration, so we would support the first person with that or the one best place to close it. Um, yeah, obviously, we, we have a specific partners of these, Tom, Tom and the guys are, are them. So, you know. I understand. I think only, the only thing we really need at, at, at this point, based on everything there, without sort of bogging everyone down too much with, with too many fine details, is because um, the, the solution itself looks good. It looks like it'll do what's needed. Um, it looks like it's got a different... Uh, a number of different capabilities depending upon end users' needs. Um, I think the thing we really need is is to see how your license structure works and, and what mm -hmm. an estimated sort of cost model of that would look like um, so that we can um, put that against um, 
other other vendors, if you like, and and how it it sit in terms of the marketplace because obviously it's all singing, all dancing, but that could also mean it's it's ten times it's very more expensive. expensive. No, I appreciate that. I think what we need to do is have another conversation offline, a uh, commercial conversation. I can come and see you guys um, yeah. and we can just discuss around the different commercials because it's not just what nice. you buy the seat for, but we can also give you commissions on um, ongoing um, call charges as well and things like that. So we can do a yeah. white labelled service or even if we still label it as ourselves supplying your customer, you can still get a percentage of all of the profit from all aspects of the telephone system. Yeah, great. Right. I think in terms of, as you just said there, there will be a, a commercial conversation to be had, whether it, um, I think the easiest thing is obviously to sell it out as 8 by 8 but there could be a way, and uh, Jay, I should be in to talk about, but um, where maybe we did, if if in certain instances where we say we manage it and run the reports and things as much brought up, like we could maybe white label that as our own service if we add in extras, but if we're just selling this, then obviously we'd do it as 8 by 8 but we've, it, we've, we've got a product that does that. We've got a product that can actually white label it, but it's not an eight by eight. Again, we're independent, so we do quite a few different things, but we do have a product that you can white label, but it won't have anywhere near the level of features that eight by eight have. So yeah. again, we'd need to talk to you around what kind of offering you want to have to the market, yeah, and we'll yeah, then yeah. wrap the right product around that offering. And run through that. There's obviously a, a number of different ways it could go, but it, it, like say, in essence, it could just be a case that we just sell eight by eight as a staff yeah. But um, obviously, when when you look at these kind of things, you have to sort of cover each base. So. Yeah, well, we, we, when, when we talk to a customer, we generally start from either two ends. Are they price sensitive, right? We start at something that's got a good budget and then try to upsell them to the right product. Or do we start with the right product, which is generally something like an eight by eight. Yeah. And then if we then, you know, have to rule eight by eight for, for commercial reasons, then we start, we, we end up somewhere else. But we've got products that sit at both ends of the spectrum and a few yeah. in between. And then it, ideally we need to be working around what your customer's requirements are, what's yeah. driving their need. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Great. Okay. Cool. Um, good. Yeah, that's, that's Any fun, really. next steps. Next steps, I think. Um, I obviously, you said come down have and have a commercial conversation. Commercial conversation with yeah. you stand the business and work out where we take it from here. But from a sales perspective, I think you're in going in the same direction as we want to go in. Yeah. Sounds okay. promising. It's okay, so you know, let's take let's move forward and get this meeting booked sooner rather than later. Yeah. Okay. I can I can come and see you this week or next week, Matt. Do you want to just show this before we go? Because I did, did you get a chance to show them this bit? This this bit this always I blows don't... my socks up every time I see this. Okay, so um, this is in the contact center. So we transcribe uh, the, the call essentially. So what what we're doing here is that you can um, fill up categories and topics and sort of filter out um, calls or you're looking for something. So you know here we got renew. So it could be in a sales environment where you know you don't want to hear people saying free of charge, and you can set it up as a topic. Okay, and all calls is transcribed, and then you sort of get the, the, the bigger button here. The more calls you've got based on that, uh, and you can sort of drill into the different areas. This is core appreciation, and you can go to all those calls. So it actually list all the calls where um, you know these statements have been said. You know, so you can go and have a look at it. You can um, you know, okay. search on keywords. It's, it's, it's done it, and you get a load of reports on that. But that's I appreciate I stampeded through a lot of this, but that's the sort of level we can get down to. Okay, great. Good. Awesome. Well, um, I will slowly as we stand this week and then we'll get a date in the diary for this week, next week. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Could we make great. Wednesday? Is that okay for you? Uh, I'd have to check my diary, but I'll, I'll, I'll probably give you a call shortly when we're offline and um, we'll, we'll try and fix out a date and time. Yeah. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. 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 We've got four more minutes. We've done it. So, Tom, we won't be mine for me.